Come, let us gather before the Lord, acknowledging His sovereign power on every nation, every leader, and every decision. And this is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr. Thank you as always for joining us on this lovely day the Lord has made and wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I just pray that the Lord Jesus Christ is out front, especially this week as our beloved nation goes to the polls to elect the next president of the United States. I just wanted to let you know that regardless of who you vote for, the Lord Jesus Christ is the only party that we belong to. Amen. So let's get started. Our morning scripture reading comes from Psalm 33, 12. Psalm 33, 12 reads as follows. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. And we definitely want to send a prayer out to everybody out there. Your safety, praying over the families and relationships that are, they're being affected by things that are out of their control outside of our voting. Voting is our control, but everything else is up to the Lord, people. Don't let this week destroy sound relationships and you know bonds you've made with people uh, because the next day is coming and the rest of the year is coming, the holiday season's coming, and you're gonna want to invite those same people back over. You know, So I pray for your peace, your countenance, and I just pray that you maintain yourselves out there that's that's our prayer for you so let's go ahead and just pray for the nation right now and if you have a prayer that you want to submit go to get-prayer.com we still have that website up where you can submit your prayers and prayer requests uh we'll post everything of course let folks know what to pray for but definitely go to get-prayer.com get-prayer.com uh for more details on where you can submit your prayer requests so we're going to pray right now for the election day pray for everything involving it Heavenly Father, creator of all that is seen and is unseen, we come before you today lifting our voices and hearts in prayer for our nation as we approach this election day. We, we acknowledge, Father, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords and all authority comes from you. We thank you for the blessing and the privilege of participating in the governance of our land and ask for your guidance in this critical time. Lord, we pray for the wisdom and discernment for all who cast their votes this week or who have already cast their vote. May they seek your will and consider the common good above the individual interest. We ask, Lord, that you would grant understanding, respect, and peace to each person as we come together as a community to make important decisions. We lift up each candidate and leader running for office, asking that you would work in their hearts and guide their actions. May they serve with integrity, humility, and a true desire for justice. Let their ambitions align with your purposes, and may they lead with compassion, courage, and wisdom if elected. Father, we also recognize the vision and tension that elections often bring. We pray for unity among your people that we may remember our higher calling to love one another as you have loved us. Let our words and actions be seasoned with grace, and may we be instruments of peace and reconciliation in our communities. Today, Lord, we put our trust in you, Lord, knowing that your plans are perfect and your sovereignty is unshakable. As we vote, as we pray, and as we await results, give us the strength to rest in your peace and to trust in your ultimate authority. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our topic today is the decision that defines you. The decision that defines you and as we enter into this election week where everybody's beginning to start voting the early voting has begun in several states including mine um, there is a decision that defines us and we're going to dive into that right now i want to handle this with some kid gloves because i understand the significance of voting and politics and the muddy waters that it creates when people are trying to fuse religion 
instead of relationship with it. There's a significant difference there in what gets mixed and why. And as a result, we understand many have fallen away from the faith because of this uh, mixture, so to speak. It should not be a mixture more than it is part of you already. Who you are is what the Bible is. At least that's how it's supposed to be, right? So let's move forward with the decision that defines you. And for that, we are in Joshua 24, 14 through 22, which reads, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Verse 16, then the people answered, far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents up out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites, who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been good to you. But the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Verse 22, then Joshua said, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we know we are witnesses when we openly proclaim your name, openly proclaim you as our Lord, as our King, as our Master. Help us remember that as we go about this week now, Lord, say what needs to be said, do what needs to be done for the glorification of your kingdom so that you may get the glory and not me, not anyone. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Every day you wake up, you are indeed making decisions. Decisions to shower, shave, put on clean clothes, go to work, do the job, make dinner, help with homework, do homework, go to sleep at a decent time. Decisions. Merriam-Webster defines decisions as a determination arrived after consideration. In other words, whatever it is, you have already thought it out, justified it, and so now you do. These are decisions that define you, plural. Then there is the decision that defines you, singular. This decision is, ser is serves as the authority of how you make all your other decisions. That decision is whether or not Jesus Christ is Lord of your life completely. The decision oversees every decision you make here on earth. It determines what you say, how you say it, what you do, and how you do it. What Satan has done to disrupt this flow of information from heaven down to us is present the option that what you do here on earth and what you believe are two different things. He wants you to believe that you can serve God, but be fine with various sins as long as you can justify their existence. He wants you to have an, a mind separate of God when it comes to making lifestyle decisions. Let's fix this up. He wants you to choose your heart and your mind over God's will for your life. If you are conflicted today over a decision you need to make, it's not because you don't know the right decision to make. That can be solved with prayer. 
It's because the thing you want to do, you know runs contrary to God's will. And so Satan comes in at, the, at this point and presents the bad idea of thinking what you believe and what you do are two different things. And so we do the two things James 7 tells us to do to get the correct outcome. We submit ourselves to God, we resist the devil, and the result is he flees. That can only be done through your submission and surrender to Jesus Christ. So when we get to this week where we're going to vote for this country's next president, I'm here to tell you the way you vote will be contingent upon the decision that defines you. And we're talking about you, not the entire country today. I want to narrow this down to just you. Break away from the hive mind for a moment and reflect on who you are. And that decision is, do you follow the Lord or do you follow this country's idols? Culture, gender, money. So what do we do? You may think, well, I want to make the right decision. God has provided a pathway of learning through the decisions made by our forefathers in his word. Through their faith and behaviors, we find guidance on what to do. And this week, the Lord sent uh, me to Joshua 24, 14 through 22. So if you're here and you're still trying to figure out who you're voting for, let's do what we should always do, and that is consult God's word. That's the first thing we do on anything. What does the Bible say about this? In the text, Joshua has called everyone together to charge them God's words. We see that in verses 1 through 13, there's a rundown from God through the words of Joshua, everything that has been done for them. Then we see the words turn more personal in verses 14 through 22. Joshua is at his end. He's doing what any good leader does before they step down out of the public eye, and that is he's reminding them of who they truly worship. And when that person is not in place, we see chaos of all types. But Joshua here begins this turnover, you could say. It's down to these words, honest words. He's not saying make the choice and be done with it. He's saying be honest with yourselves. Then make the choice and be done with it. No one's going to debate you out of it. Just choose whom you serve. That's it. I've seen what God has done. I've been delivered time and time again. And, and I, as much as we are going as a group, we are also individuals that have to make a choice. This is the plight of Joshua standing on your own two feet and just say it because out of everything you do or say this, this is the decision that defines you. Just like it defines us right now. So here are some rules of the road that might help you this week. Or any decision you got to make. We're just talking about this week because it's election week. First, beyond your feelings and desires, the decision that defines you begins with remembering God, his charge, and your choice. Remembering God, his charge, and your choice. Verse 14 says, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. In verse 2 of the same chapter, God confirms that these gods were worshipped. How, we, how do we know this? This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. So we see there that this is an accurate point because God is accurate. God is right all the time. So we know these people have served other gods. That's why Joshua says it. Let's bring it to 2024. It doesn't matter who your parents voted for in the past, what you voted for. You remember God, 
his charge and the choice that you have to make. Remember what the Lord has done for you. Remember the charge. Fear him and serve him with all faithfulness. Whatever belief systems you had, you get rid of. What we're seeing in the day society is the handing down of the cultural, racial, gendered, and economical idols that kept people in line and separated from God's word. This is why if you're a follower of Jesus Christ this week, it's, it's pivotal here on earth, but it will just be Tuesday in heaven because when I think about what God has brought me from, the deliverance he's carried me from in my family, what we've experienced individually and together as a unit, I cannot help but praise the Lord thy God. And from that decision, though the finding decision is easy to make. But the decision that defines you will also mean making your decision and understanding others. Guaranteed, everybody's not going to make the same decision that you're making this week. But you got to understand it to disciple it. That's where Satan gets in the middle of things. We get in our emotions. We get all hyped up. We get all revved up and we forget to leave space for the discipleship hour. When this is all said and done, people, you're going to want to go back to the mission field. You want to want to go back to representing the kingdom. You can't take a break from kingdom thinking for politics and think you're going to go back to it with the same view by everybody else. They're going to see what you did and they're going to call you a hypocrite. And bringing it back to this week's election again, because God wants to help you, you can continue serving the idols of race, gender, economics, because anything that is put in front of God and is worshiped is an idol, and we see that today, that's why I say those. People are more concerned about what color Jesus is, what color the church folk are, when you invite them to church, if you believe that there are only two genders and how much money is in your, in your people group before they even ask if you believe in Jesus Christ. Because it's not only a priority of choice, that word again, so Joshua says here, do it and be done with it. Choose. But he also lets them know it doesn't matter to me who you choose. He says that in a, in a roundabout way. I'm not, I'm not putting words in the man's mouth. Just looking at the tone of his words. Because he's already presented to you what the Lord has done for you, for me. And his family, however, is going to choose the Lord. What Joshua is saying here is he's already presented to you. He's reminded the people what has already been done for them by the Lord. God is speaking through him. He's talking to these people. He, they're listening to attentively. And then Joshua comes in the fray and says, choose this day whom you will serve. Make a decision before we go any further, before we get all the way into the place where God has promised, who do you serve? Make a decision. Just, just be honest. And a lot of you this week will have to make that decision. You will have to sit down and have a long conversation with yourself. Whom do you serve? That's it. Because you're going to be held accountable to that. The decision that defines you doesn't just begin with remembering God, his charge, and your choice in the matter, or meaning that making the decision and understanding others, but it also means that it will reveal God to you. The decision that defines you will reveal the Lord Jesus Christ to you. Verse 16, the people answered, they explain far from it being for us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey among all the nations. And the Lord drove us drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. The revelation of God's work in these people's lives are seen. It was the Lord, our God himself. He, God, protected us. And the Lord, verse 18. And then we see from 
that, re that revelation an easy decision. The decision to serve and the decision to be in relationship with him. If you find yourselves wondering this week about your vote and who to vote for, who you got here and what can you testify to, who do you serve and who are you in relationship with? I think that's what it comes down to. And who comes closer to it? Do you serve your emotions? Maybe that's what you serve. Who comes closer to your emotional well-being? Maybe it's uh, the culture. Maybe you serve the culture. As much as you understand the Bible and know of Jesus Christ, and you may be a Christian, the, the pa your passion for the culture is just too much. Maybe it's a gender line. I don't know. Maybe you serve that. Maybe it's the it's your pocketbook. Let's face it, we all have had some high prices to deal with as of late, including yours truly. But I don't serve it. I deal with it, but I don't serve it. Because that's where you are. And that's where you are going to have to really, really figure it out. Verse 18, they don't come into agreement. They are responding to what Joshua has charged them in. Verse 15, he says, choose this day whom ye will serve. They chose, and so should you. Because the decision that defines you to serve God through Jesus Christ helps you when you come to this impasse, when it comes to prioritizing the things that we deal with in this thing called life. These people were not made to do anything. Let's be very clear. He presented the situation and he called them to make a decision. They made their own decisions. They chose God, not Joshua, putting first things first. Notice that in the text, they do not say they're following Joshua. They are serving and following the Lord. Why is that? Because the decision that defines you will hold you accountable to God. Not me. Definitely not Joshua. To God. Because we're all held accountable to the God of the Bible. We see in 19 through 21, he reminds them of who God is. He's holy. He's jealous. You can't be serving other gods. You're going to get punished. But 21, they say, no, we will serve the Lord. And then, you know, in 22, he reminds them that they are witnesses against themselves. And they respond to that as well. If you choose the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior and still think you're going to serve these other gods, then you're in for a world of hurt. This is what's going on right now in the world. There are people out there right now that know the Lord. They have no problem desiring to serve the Lord, but they don't want to give up the gods they've been serving all their life, the gods of race, the gods of the culture, the gods of gender ideology, all these different things they worship. These folks literally worship it. They give it allegiance. It trumps everything they come across, everybody they talk to. It rules the day. It rules the life. But that's where God wants to be. That's where God needs to be. I've said it once, twice, three times. We are all made uniquely in God's eyes. But that uniqueness does not come before the cross of Christ. That uniqueness cannot save you. Blackness cannot save me. No different than whiteness cannot save anybody. Hispanic heritage cannot save anybody. Only the cross of Jesus Christ can save you. It, and, and, and it's important to understand that now to get things right, get first things first to properly arrange your dialogue with people. Let them know, yes, I'm a Christian who so happens to be African-American or Caucasian or, or whatever you are. You're Christian first. You're a follower of Christ. And when you put the Lord out there, out front, he reveals and suppresses the evil around you. 
He brings light to those things that are like sign with you as well. It's not a, it, this is not a matter of the heart. This is indeed a matter of God's will in your life. I'm not here to scare you into who to vote for and why. My question to you is, are you in alignment and are you abiding in the vine? Separate from any vine, the fruit dies. It's, it's, it's a good test to see where you are and where, with Christ in your relationship. Is it in spirit and truth or you and your seasonal feelings? You got to choose. And when you choose, you held accountable to it. Notice here in verse 21, the people declared they will serve the Lord. And then in verse 22, he tells them, you are witnesses against yourselves. And they confirm that in response. They're being held accountable to each other and to the God they said they're going to serve. On election day. You will be a witness against yourselves on the decision, by the decision, with the decision that defines you. And that decision, people, is not a piece of paper going to a ballot box. It's not a little button on a machine. The decision you chose oh so long ago to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, who died on a cross for you, who was risen three days later to give you the opportunity to be in heaven with him to save you from your depravity that jesus keep first things first you're gonna wait in line or mail it in whatever and on that note you gotta make a choice you split hairs all day on both causes but there's no such thing as a perfect candidate but there is such a thing as perfect truth, and that is in Christ. I'm sure you have your way of measuring who's the closest. Do you. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And God willing, we'll talk to you next week. If we're still friends, <laughs> of course we are. Y'all take care. <laughs>